In the last section, we got our first taste of interfaces with Go. We're now going to continue by doing just a quick review, a quick rehash of what we literally were just talking about two minutes ago. So just a quick repeat, just to kind of drill things in. We'll then talk a little bit about some of the trivia or just some extra things that you should probably know around interfaces. And then we'll continue on by taking a look at some other examples of interfaces. Now, just to be clear, interfaces are really tough to get used to because they're a very kind of abstracted type topic. You know, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around them. So it does really require a little bit of code practice on your part to really get a hang of them and what they do for us. So we will see a couple good code examples, but first let's talk about some of these other follow-up topics. Okay, so first off, I want to again kind of reiterate exactly what defining that interface just did for us. So this diagram right here is really the same thing that we're looking at right here, just in a slightly different view, just to give you a very slight different take on it. Now, as we describe interfaces here, I'm going to really repeat what we were just saying about them in the last video. But again, I'm just repeating it so you can kind of get things drilled in. Okay, so in our program, we have a type called EnglishBot. EnglishBot has a function called getGreeting associated with it. When I say associated, I mean to say that the getGreeting function expects to see a type EnglishBot as its receiver. And so we would say that getGreeting is associated with the EnglishBot type. And then we did the exact same thing with SpanishBot as well. We then defined a new interface called bot. And we had said that this interface expects to see any other type inside of our application that, inter that implements a function called getGreeting and returns a string. And if that other type does, if any other type does, that other type inside the application is then considered to also be of type bot. And so if we were to kind of diagram out the different types inside of our application, yeah, we've got English bot, we've got Spanish bot, and th those both kind of fall under the umbrella of type bot, represented by the green box right here. Now, a little bit more on the syntax that we actually used to define the interface. So the syntax that we used right here. So we're gonna kind of change gears just a little bit. Now in this diagram right here, I added on some extra arbitrary arguments or extra types to the bot interface. So I added on a string and an int and a string and an error right here. We're not gonna add these in. These are just examples of what some more complex interfaces inside of Go look like. So let's walk through the syntax here. We say type to tell Go that we are defining a new type. We then put the name of this new type or the name of the interface and then the interface keyword. Then our curly braces, and then inside the curly braces, we list out all the different functions and the values that they are the types that they have to return for another type to be considered type bot. So we're not only limited to describing the return types of a function. We can also say something about what we expect this function to be called with. So in our particular case, the get greeting function did not require any arguments. But if for some reason we had said that get greeting was supposed to require an argument, like maybe it was supposed to require in a number for some crazy reason, then we would have updated this get greeting right here to say, hey, if you're going to try to match interface bot, you have to define a function called get greeting that accepts an int as an argument. So we have to list out both the argument types and the return types. But do note that we're not actually trying to name any variables here or anything like that. We're just listing out the types. So back over here in this example of syntax, we could have just as easily said that the get greeting function had to accept an argument of string as the first argument and an argument of type int as the second argument. And then we could have also said that get greeting had to return multiple types as well. So maybe get greeting had to return both a string and an error type as well. So we're not limited to just one type here, and we're not limited to just describing the return types. We can describe both the argument types and the return types. In addition, we can also list out multiple different functions that have to be satisfied inside of an interface. So for example, here's a vastly expanded version of the type bot. So we could have very easily said that, oh yeah, you have to define get greeting. It has to take a first argument of int, or excuse me, a first argument of string, a second of int, and then it returns a string and an error. And then we could have also said that to qualify as type bot, you also have to define something like get bot version. 
and you also have to define a function called respond to user and it has to accept something of type user. And so we can list out as many different functions inside of an interface as we want to, to just kind of further customize exactly what a type has to satisfy to qualify as being of type bot. Now we'll see a couple good examples of when we need to define multiple functions to satisfy an interface when we start looking at some other examples later on. Okay, so that's a little bit more on the syntax of the interface type declaration. We're now going to talk a little bit about some of the different types that we've been working with. And so I know I'm using the word type here a lot, and even inside of the actual code that we're writing, we're now seeing the word type listed out a lot. So I see like type interface right here. I see type struct and type struct and blah, 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 all these different things now floating around our application. And so I want to give you a little bit of terminology in how we kind of break out the types that declare something that we can actually create a value of and uh, these new type that we seem to have right here of an interface. And so by that, well, let's just look at the diagram before I talk my head off here. Okay, so inside this diagram, I've listed out two different types that we're going to start to see inside of our applications. So on the left-hand side, we have something that we call a concrete type. A concrete type is something that we can actually kind of create a value out of directly and then access it and change it and create new copies of it and whatnot. So we would say that like a map or a struct, an int, a string, an English bot, these are all concrete types because I can create a value using each of them. Like I can create a value of type English bot. I can create a value directly with type Spanish bot, but I cannot create a value with directly value type bot right here because it is of type interface. And so we refer to bot as being an interface type to mean, hey, we can't actually create a value directly out of this type. Only We can only create values directly out of the concrete types. And again, those are not only the built-in types of the language, but also custom ones that we declare by extending some of these different types. Okay, now I only mention this to you because you're going to see the term concrete type and interface type in some documentation as you start to read up on this stuff yourself. So just be aware that you'll start to see some of this terminology out there. Okay, now this is a long section, but there's one last little bit, one last slide I wanna get at here. And you know what, I'm actually thinking about it and this last slide is gonna take a little bit of time. So let's take a quick break, come back in the next section and we'll talk about this very last diagram. So quick break, and I'll see you in just a minute.